All right, so I'm here at the ODG. I'm gonna try on the ODG R9 for the first time. And I see a 4K video right here in front of me. In front of everything, there's a 4K video. Wow, that's cool. So, hello, so who are you? Oh, let me turn on. Hello, I'm Patrick Johnson, Director of Business Development at ODG. Uh, so today, we are showcasing two products. First one is the R9. This is our prosumer facing product. Um, it has a 50 degree field of view, so it's the equivalent of sitting in the best seat in the house of a movie theater. Uh, it has a front facing six off camera that allows for uh, six degrees of freedom, so be able to do better uh, motion tr markerless tracking. Um, it has 1080p to each eye, so it's a high definition resolution. Um, and it's running the 835 Snapdragon processor. Um, we are the only company that currently has the 835 processor inside of our headset and the first uh, mobile device to get access to it. This is potentially perhaps the fastest sound processor in the whole world. That's right. It's right there and it's real. That's and right. Are using it? And we're the first ones to get it. And it works. You just you had it on your head. These, yes, yeah, so that's right. These glasses, uh, our R9s are going to be coming out in Q2 2017. And then our next generation, the, the consumer glasses, which I can show you next, those will be coming out in the second half. Is that the one, the consumer one? Is that the one they're checking out here? There's a lot of people queuing up to try it out. So these glasses are the R9s, are what is currently being showcased at this table. So they're all checking those out right now? What's right. the demo that they're seeing? So the, the demo walks through a, a couple different use cases. Um, one of them is a game that you're in a race car. It's using that spherical camera in the in the table, and it's actually a first person. You're inside the inside of the car, and you're able to see all the people around the table in real time while you're in a virtual car. Uh, it, it walks you through a ed educational experience with a, a virtual volcano. Um, and a, a couple different AR experiences as well. So how do you enable AR? You need to be able to uh, measure distance to stuff? That's right, well, there's a couple different ways of doing it. When you have a uh, six-stop fisheye uh, camera like the one we have here, uh, basically you don't need a marker. So what it does is it maps the world, and then you can anchor virtual images to the real world where you'd like them to But is there any infrared or anything to know the distance of stuff? You don't need to necessarily know the dis distance as long as you have two cameras. So there's an RGB camera right here, and then the six off camera as well. Nice, so there's two cameras? And then actually one other thing that we have is on right here, this is a uh, MIPI port. And what you can do is actually plug in different sensors into this port. So if you wanted to use your, put your infrared sensor on it, you would simply just clip it in, and now you have infrared with your, your And now you have Project Tango on your, on your face. That's right, exactly. It's potentially. Potentially, absolutely. And uh, is it running Android? Yes, this is actually running Android 7, so the latest and greatest from Android. And you have a different version? So yes, the, the next version is the R8. <clears throat> These are our consumer-facing glasses. Um, one point I'd mention is the last pair, the R9, that is s around 6.5 ounces. The R8 is only four, about four and a half ounces. So it's very lightweight. Is it also the 835 or not? And it's also running the 835. But what's less in there because it's lighter? What, what did you remove? So some of the things that are, are different is we have... Um, we don't have the same sensors in here. It's a little bit smaller display, so the field of view is 40 degrees versus the 50 degree field of view. Um, let's see here. So I'll show you the same video playing on these. So this is 720p. Yeah. So I'm gonna try the R8 for the first time right here. So you can see nice. the light goes Yeah, it feels like nothing. It feels like sunglasses. Yeah, are you still filming? Yeah. I think so. Yep, there we go. All right, yeah. Yeah, it's really clear and nice. I'd like to be able to uh, see uh, the Twitter accounts of everybody. And yeah, of and course. Can you do stuff like that? So if you have the, if you have all the data and had all the people's faces mapped in a database, uh, the front-facing camera could do facial recognition. You just you need to sync to uh, security cameras that are in the room <laughs> with facial recognition <laughs> and scan their badges when they come in. I suppose so. Yeah, we're we're really not focused on that element of it, but it, it's totally well, feasible. There will be parties update. where everybody have to wear one. Of course, yeah. If you, it, can, if you don't wear the glasses, then you're not part of the party. Networking, you know who is who, and who you need to talk talk to. Yeah, or if you're on a dating application 
information, you get the arrow that pops up and you say, hey, I'm available. <laughs> All right. So uh, what is ODG? So ODG, we've been around since 1999. Uh, we've, we've, the first six generations of glasses have been exclusive to the government, so soldiers on the battlefield are actually using our glasses. Um, in 2015, we opened it up to Enterprise. And now, as I mentioned, 44% of all Fortune 500 companies have either purchased our glasses or have budgeted to purchase them in 2017. Um, currently, we have been focusing on enterprise. Uh, in 2016, 21st Century Fox came in as our lead investor, and now we're taking two parallel paths. One that will continue to focus on enterprise with our R7, and then our next family of glasses, the R8 and the R9, will be uh, exclusive for uh, consumers. Consumer and prosumer. Consumers and prosumers. And super enthusiastic uh, geeks. That's right, and the early adopters. So is it possible to imagine applications where you enter a store and they give you glasses on and you can get an augmented uh, experience in the store and they tell you, don't get that milk, take the soya milk, it's more healthy for your profile. Oh, absolutely. We actually showed a, a showcase one of those applications at AWE uh, in 2016 and the way it worked is you would you could actually tie into some of your other nutritional apps just like you mentioned you pick it up and you say hey these nachos uh, are is this something that I should be eating today it pops up all the nutritions and it lets you know well if you do eat the nachos then you're not gonna be able to eat anything Don't the rest take of the them day and get out of the store and go into Whole Foods but but also exactly <laughs> but one other thing to that is you can also do indoor navigation so if you if you had a um, uh, your grocery list, you in, updated it into the glasses. Now you could do indoor tracking, and it'd be able to optimize your route of what what products you needed to pick and where to pick them from. I'm so looking forward to this, this world where the whole world is mapped, and there's a whole bunch of people with Project Tango and stuff, and it all gets indoor mapped. Yes. Every store, everything, and it's just you don't have to wear it all the time. It'd be nice you can easily fold them, put them in the pocket, and wear them sometimes. Yeah, exactly, and that and that's really the what we're you know focused on now is is most of our customers they don't have to they don't wear the glasses um, from the moment they wake up to when they go to bed they they wear the glasses uh, when they have a job to do and for the consumer case when they have a application they want to run or a movie they want to watch or a game they want to play. How long is the battery? So currently the um, we. With the R7, our currently available glasses, uh, it's it's really use case dependent. So if you're doing something that takes a lot of computer vision, um, such as augmented reality or mapping your environment, you're going to get about 90 minutes of battery life. If you wanted to watch a movie or just view your PDF, you get about four hours. <clears throat> now, with the, the R8 and the R9, um, these are brand new products to the market. What I can tell you is the 835 processor is 40% more efficient than the 805 processor that we are currently running. Is it 10 nanometers? It's 10 nanometers, that's right. Which is crazy. Yeah. How do you get the chips so early? How can you be the first consumer in the world to have it? Well, you know, I, I would say that that's just uh, more validation that Qualcomm sees that smart glasses and is going to be the way of the future and ODG, as we like to say, are, are leading that leading that way. Google Glass was great, but it never really happened because they didn't want to sell it. So are you going to sell it, right? We're selling it For today. Sure. We've been we've been shipping since November. You can buy our glasses on. You can go online and you can buy our glasses today. The R7, right? The R7 glasses. On based on the A20 or what's inside? 805. 805. Yep. So um, so you're shipping 805, and people can buy uh, at 2,000. How much dollars? Uh, 2,750 dollars. And how much is going to be the R8, the R9? The R9 is going to be uh, the R9 will be. Under 1800, so it'll be 1799, and the R8 is going to be under 1000. All right, which is uh, not much more than an iPhone. That's right, yeah, exactly. Not much more. So, for today's standards, you know, for being able to get that hands free, body position independent, <laughs> that big screen HD TV you can take with you anywhere, you know, it has a lot more pack than just even your iPhone does today. So, you have business development at ODG, right? That's right. So, how much, uh, how many companies are approaching, how, how many projects do you have going? On right now. So, you know, as I mentioned, the 44% the of all Fortune 500 companies have either purchased the glasses to kickstart um, development. Um, we're, in, in, we're in a lot of different stages, everything from pilot programs to deployment with, with um, Fortune 500 companies that are out there. So, you know, this is going to be a big, uh, big part of the future, and this is technology that not only companies and enterprises using, but the consumer will be using as well. You partner with Google. Well, we're all these augmented apps to work fine and stuff. 
So we're, by, by the nature of it being Android, you know, we're a power user for, for Google. Um, it, certainly there is open to being a, a tighter partnership between Google and ODG in They the really have to get into this and help you get them like a nice app ecosystem in there, not only for ODG, but for in general. They have a Pokemon Go, uh, does it work? Pokemon Go does work, and in fact, you can uh, you can search ODG and Pokemon Go, and there's a picture of me catching the first Pokemon with a uh, <laughs> pair of smart glasses. So, so you, how do you catch it? So we have it actually what's called an RSM. Uh, it's this little finger controller that's on your, your that goes on your finger. Uh, it has a trackpad and has motion sensors in it. So in order to throw the Pokeball, <laughs> all I do is just move the RSM like this, and I can toss the ball out to catch the uh, Pokemon. Nice. Do you walk around in the street with an ODG in your head all the time, or you don't? Of course I do. Why you wouldn't do. I? Yeah, yeah. You can see me in San Francisco wandering the streets with it on my face. You do that? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Every day. Every day. When I wake up, I actually just wake up and I put them straight onto my head. No, not really. Not really. But, <laughs> but you do walk around and you do try different, uh, like, uh, I guess, uh, prototypes of future applications. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's really about the use case. Like, when I travel, of course I'm putting on the glasses and I'm watching movies while I'm sitting in that flight. I get a big screen mobile movie theater I can take with me anywhere. Is it comfortable? Does it get uh, tiresome on the eyes? It, it doesn't, actually. And, and what we've done is, unlike as you mentioned, Google Glass, where you have to look up, that causes eye fatigue. With our glasses, it converges at eight feet, where your eyes naturally converge. So you'll have, never have any eye fatigue from looking through. So uh, are you using a copy uh, micro display, or how does it work? So we actually do all of our displays in-house. That's that's really where we shine, is we are the, the manufacturer, the glasses, all of our patents are around uh, optics, or a lot of them. And uh, so, you know, out of the industry, I would say that ours, our optics are, are probably the best resolution that's out there. So you're not there. using Copen, you're not using Epson? Not, not at all. they have not their even. own solutions. How do you compare with the Epson? So Epson is a, is a totally different uh, uh, head warm platform. They're using prisms and uh, we, we use OLED. And we, we uh, OLED. OLED. And so the, a, a big difference is, you know, we, we've done prisms, we've built waveguides, we've done it all. You know, we've been around since 99, like I said. And we think right now, with, with uh, our current optics, those are the, the best design for the highest re resolution and the best field of view. Is that a transparent OLED, or what is it? It is a transparent OLED. So you're looking through the OLED? That's right, that's correct. Which is crazy. It is crazy. So when it's off, you see through how much, uh, how much is it? It's like a tinted sunglasses? Or like yeah, it, you know, it's, it's like a very uh, lightly tinted sunglass that you'd be looking for. You know, it's, uh, you're looking at probably over 60% transmissivity. And that's dual 1080p? And the 1080p to each eye. That's so right. Two displays. Right that's there. right. So it's more like a 4K experience, but it's 1080p. Yeah, it's crazy. So yeah. you're gonna do a 4K version? You we have, have a we have a 4K right? camera that's in there. I'm sure the military has a 4K, right? They're Why would 4K? To them? No, they don't care about the movies. They just want to be able to. Uh, no, you know. this may high resolution. They need the pilots and all that stuff, maybe. Well, they may have it in the in the ships, they but say uh, what they have. yeah, I can't the tell military. you what the military has. All right. So uh, lots of apps. Can the app developers contribute right now? What can they do? Yeah. So like I said, it's Android. So if a uh, probably I'd say 98% of Android applications work out of the box on our glasses. So you could easily up the, up um, upload your APK onto the glasses and be able to run it. Now, with that said, there's certainly optimizations that you would want to make with our with a head-worn platform versus a, a, a smartphone or a tablet. One, like you mentioned, is see-through. Um, the other is that it's you can use the motion sensors in it, and you can also be able to pin information around your environment versus being fixed to just one small screen. I want to go to the museum and get a, a information next to the paintings I'm looking at. Sure. Object recognition. Look at your Mona Lisa. See who painted it. When it was made. That's easy. And just say, give me more information. It's too awesome. It just comes more and more and more. That's right. Or we could have the Mona Lisa walk out of the actual painting itself and come uh, do a little dance for you in front. Of and I'd like to walk around in the city and get information about places that are in the city. Yeah, right so the, there in front of me. The glasses actually have GPS in them as well. So you can actually uh, do navigation around the city, object recognition, slam, you know, it, it's able to, to do it all. And tells me where's a nice restaurant. And... Yeah, so think about like uh, your Yelp, the monocle. Nobody uses monocle because it's a pain to go up and actually look around to see where the points of interest are. Now with, with a heads up, with a head mounted display, you can actually just look at where you are and be able to get the, the ratings that pop up above these restaurants, you know, see the reviews in real time. That's real value.
Google had this app where you can recognize a bunch of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of uh, stuff that needs to be recognized out there. Like deep learning, I don't know, image learning. It's, I guess it's companies like Google that needs to be in there. And, uh, so you can just walk around and it tells you what it is just based on the, going through the cloud. Sure. You know, I mean, we're a hardware company and we do the hardware really well. We leave it up to people like Google and a lot of our um, over you know thousands of app developers that are out there to develop uh, th these type of you know AI algorithms, computer vision algorithms, and the Can content. Can you click on glasses. stuff with your fingers without sure. using the remote? Yeah, absolutely. You just put your finger in front of you, and it's calibrated to know where you're pointing. So we have different software partners. Uh, one of them is Augmenta. They have a software development kit that enables uh, gesture recognition. So let's say you're a t technician and you're walking through a um, checklist. You want to show that you completed a uh, step. You give it a thumbs up. Uh, you want to go to the next one. You swipe right. So it really just has to be uh, integrated into the app. And if you want night vision, you add the module. And that's right. With our with our sensor uh, with our sensor module, you could put in your night vision sensor into the glasses. Now you have night vision. Which uh, which uh, one point on that is the owner Ralph Osterau, He is the inventor of the PVS seven night vision uh, goggles. The so night vision as you know it today, our owner also invented that. <laughs> owner of a ODG. So uh, is he around? What is he doing? Is his idea to do all this uh, consumer stuff now? This is his passion, right? Yeah. Uh, Headworn is his passion. He's been doing it for 32 years. Like I said, he invented the night vision glasses. He's put heads-up displays and scuba masks. Um, we have done, like James I said, Bond? <laughs> James Bond, he actually invented the underwater car for James Bond. So if you go to watch the movie, he invented that underwater car. He used to do a bunch of scuba stuff for the for the Navy, too. Very. But I guess the real James Bond is using his technology for many years now. Uh, that's right. Yeah. So look it up. It's uh, one of there's an article that they actually did, and they call him the real life Q. Right? He's the guy behind James Bond, creating all the cool gadgets that James yeah. Bond uses. On so the there's field. him and there's Tesla. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. That's right. They're fighting for who's the guy or something. Well, you know. Well, <laughs> yeah, that maybe so. I, I would I would say uh, our, our boss has a pretty cool history though. Cool. And uh, how has it been to sell uh, millions of these for cool consumers and get the price down and all that stuff? Sure. I mean, so uh, 21st Century Fox, as I mentioned, is our lead investor. Um, they are, you know, really focused on this being the next platform that consumers are going to consume media on, and so we're we're taking steps in that direction. Is LTE built in? Uh, yeah, uh, not yet. There's not, no, yet. not there's nothing. There's no SIM card it's not on the 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 roadmap today, but that's not to say that at some point when you know you go through all the regulatory hoops and. Oops, uh, that someday it may be. Because uh, Snapdragon 805, uh, 835 has an LTE modem built in, so you, you could enable it, maybe. You could, you could. Cool.